Well, <clears throat> I guess that everyone is, um, just about everyone is probably aware of the Glenn Greenwald piece that came out in The Guardian, and he has credentials that go back a long way. A lot of people have heard of him and his, you know, views on war and uh, civil rights and, and, and this sort of thing. Yet, there's still a few things about this whole, this whole story that really, uh, they really don't uh, seem to, to make sense. It's, it's astounding, first of all, that the mainstream media, although they've been trying to downplay things here and there, and, but the fact that they've, they've, uh, that they've portrayed the whole thing a as a matter of civil rights, even, after being so mm, blasé or, you know, I don't know, lackadaisical for so many years. And here they are covering this. But, so you have to give credit to The Guardian for for breaking the story. Of course, uh, now we have an investigation into the leaker instead of, um, you know, instead of uh, Congress um, being uh, upset or, you know, bewildered or, I don't know what the word is, but, you know, there was a time that uh, we had a president named Nixon and uh, the Congress had sort of a different reaction to similar things. Now, it seems like the, uh, you know, Obama gets up there and he says, uh, if you don't trust the courts and you don't trust the Congress and you don't trust uh, the executive, then we're in, we're in bad shape. Well, <laughs> no, no one seems to, no one seems to trust the, those, all the branches of government and the entire thing because you know, the whole thing seems so corrupt. And on top of that, you know, there was a chart that came out the other day that I saw, I think it was on Truth Out, that showed that uh, as far as um, inequality of wealth goes, the United States is completely off the chart. Like, there's no way of measuring compared to other industrialized or Western, uh, you know, countries like Western Europe and even Eastern Europe, I think, maybe some other countries, you know, our inequality is um, just off the chart. And I think that's a lot of the reason why people, uh, they know this, they see what's going on and they see, they don't believe uh, anything they're being told about the economy or, or anything else. But the part that bothers me, before I get too off track, as I often do, is the fact that this guy goes to Hong Kong and then he says that he wants asylum in Iceland. Well, why didn't he go to Iceland? <laughs> I don't understand. Maybe it'll be revealed over time why he did chose to do that instead of going directly to Iceland if that's where he wanted to be. I don't know. Everything has gotten to the point where you expect any time now you know they'll say we were just kidding or something I you know I don't know what they'll say but <laughs> you, you can't believe you know what goes on you know and the fact that they expect us to uh, follow along as though we can uh, you know what's the word uh, suspend disbelief you know, you couldn't write a science fiction novel at this point, you know, that was, uh, it was like this. Anyway, at the same time, the news is uh, reported that, uh, the U.S. still can't, um, give up on this idea of overthrowing the government of Syria and wants to make things even worse, as if though it isn't bad enough over there and might um, 
directly, probably they already have been arming the rebels directly, who knows, but now they're coming out and saying that they might openly, directly and openly arm the, the rebels. And, you know, all these troops and this war games that's going on in Jordan, right next door to Syria, I think which the Russians don't like that either, the Russians who are in Syria, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good, really. I mean, and you would think that over time they'd make peace with Iran. I mean, there's money to be made. There's there's gas and oil. I'm always told about the South Pars, uh fields and you hear stories of competing pipelines you know maybe that's what it's all about who gets to build the pipeline to feed Europe natural gas and maybe oil I even remember Brzezinski in the book The Grand Chessboard which I'm most part halfway through and he says that um, if uh, either in what the region that he calls the you know, sort of like the inner Balkans or the outer Balkans, I forget exactly his terminology, but in that region, he says there's two countries that are sort of on the outside of that region that are very important, Iran and Turkey. And if either one of them became um, destabilized, as these guys always say, it would make it uh, difficult to... Um, keep the Russians from uh, being, I guess, dominant, he's saying, according to Brzezinski, in this whole region. Uh, so why are they always trying to destabilize Iran? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And, and, and now with what's going on in Turkey, you got to wonder, I mean, that at least, I haven't seen any evidence the Russians are gleeful about this, but... According to Brzezinski, if, if Turkey were to be destabilized, either one of those countries, he says, Iran or Turkey, you know, they would, um, their ability to influence events in that area would increase, according to Brzezinski. This was written back in the 90s, though, so things might be a little bit different now. He, and the book is written from a very American-centric point of view, American and European, the transatlantic uh, alliance, I suppose, in which Brzezinski basically tells the Russians that they only have one option. He names different things they could do, but he says really they only have one option, which is to join Europe, and, and apparently join Europe on the terms that, uh, you know, America finds acceptable, that's what it seems like, with NATO encroaching on their borders, ever moving eastward. And, and the EU and NATO, and Brzezinski doesn't see why this is a problem for the Russians, and that they should join Europe, and that would give them the technology, and, you know, they'd be happy, and everyone would be happy. Well, and then one of the options was that they could be sort of on their own, um, and that wouldn't be very good for them, but I don't see why that would matter to a country if they had everything they needed, and they had a territory the size of Russia, you know, Maybe maybe it wouldn't be so bad to be uh, on your own, as he's. I think that's how he puts it. I don't know exactly, but that's what he's basically saying. Of course, you know, there's lots of options, really, and lots of things can happen. And there's all of Asia. Russia could be part of Asia if it wanted to, but really, I suppose Russia could be part of the world. You know, we're as some people point out, that we're headed towards a, a multipolar polar world. And so they say, I don't know if it's true, Chavez was a big proponent of that, and I don't see why the people uh, in Russia, Putin, and the rest of them wouldn't be. Um, at any rate, we have all this going on at once, and you got to wonder what it's really all about. Why are they telling us these things now? You know, um, who knows? Maybe it is all the real, and and this guy's on the up and up, and, and it's it's incredible. And the the reaction in America has not been for such a giant 
event of revelation, things that conspiracy theorists knew for a long time, or believed and said, and it's probably much worse. But, you know, you would think that there'd be more of an action reaction from the American people, but I haven't seen, I haven't seen that kind of reaction from the American people. But, you know, a lot of us are tired and just feel um, powerless, I guess, and uh, are struggling to get by, and, and we know our government's corrupt, and it just reinforces the the belief. Well, I suppose that's enough for one video.